Hey everyone, let me tell you a little story. So, about three weeks ago, a gentleman by the name of Matt Trentini reached out to me on Twitter and asked me if I wanted to come along to the local hackerspace meeting for a MicroPython meetup. He's a Melbourne based guy and he's heavily involved in the MicroPython community. He's a contributor and he's uh, working in the, I believe, the ESP space, so ESP8266 and 32. And so he, you know, not badgered me, but he asked me many times over a few weeks to come down and I thought, why not? So a few weeks ago, I went down to a meeting on a Wednesday night and I know nothing about MicroPython. I mean, I do a little bit of Python on the Mac, but I don't do any Python work on microcontrollers. And I'm a C++ and C guy. Not that I do that very well either, but that's okay. And so I went down and I took some stuff with me and I managed to load up the MicroPython core onto my 8266 chip on my busted Wi-Fi clock, you know, revision one, the bodged one, and got that up and running and managed to turn some NeoPixels on and off, which was pretty cool. So since then, we've been chatting back and forth on Twitter, and he put out a bit of a challenge slash dare, kind of an off-the-cuff comment to me last week, something to do with using a an ESP32 Pico D4 to make the smallest possible microcontroller you could that was a full ESP32 controller with antenna and everything else. And I kind of thought, nah, I don't want to do that. And then it kind of festered in my head. And the next thing I knew, I had spent all of Thursday night, all of Friday, all of Friday night, all of Saturday, all of Saturday night, and this morning, designing my first super tiny ESP32 development board from scratch. And I did. And I shipped it off to JLC PCB this morning and a whole lot of parts from LCSC, put my order in, and I'm hoping that'll come through sometime this week. So I did it. I have developed what I've called the Tiny Pico. I know Tiny Pico means tiny, tiny. <laughs> That's okay. That was by design. It's a little ESP32 development board with 20 header pins on it. And there were a few requirements that Matt suggested that would be ideal to, to either hit or beat if we actually worked on one. So let's have a look at what I did. Okay, the criteria that Matt had was this. It had to be small, obviously. It had to have as much GPIO broken out as possible. So it wasn't good enough to only break out four or five IO just to get it super small. It had to have an onboard antenna. Now whether that was a PCB antenna or whether it was something else like a, a ceramic or a metal antenna, it had to be able to do full Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, everything that the ESP32 could do. And a plus would be potentially that we could build some type of shields for it so we can do things like LiPo support or an OLED shield or maybe a battery backed RTC shield. Who knows? So this was the key, this stuff here. And we kept referencing this little guy. This is the Wemos D1 Mini, as many of you will know. It's an 8266 port. And the idea was to beat this in size. <laughs> now that's pretty small, right? So if you consider that an ESP32 module is almost as big as a Wemos D1 Mini all by itself, we weren't going to use the Room32 module, and we couldn't obviously use the Rover because it was even bigger. So he wanted to make it using the ESP32. Whoops. <laughs> ESP32 Pico D4 which is a new chip, well it's not new, it's new to me anyway. It's been around for a little while, but it's a, a newer chip that Espressive made where inside this module here, inside the room, right, if I draw it like this, with the antenna up here, there's an IC for the microcontroller, there's some IC for some flash, there's a crystal, there's a whole bunch of other stuff, a whole lot of passives everywhere. There's all sorts of crazy stuff in here, right, inside that module. 
What they did with the Pico D4 is they made a smaller IC where all of this was inside the die of this. So it's not a shield. They're not separate components inside. All of this is inside this one chip. And it's a QFN. And it's smaller than the module. But it's got no aerial, obviously. But it's got built-in crystal, it's got built-in flash, it's got everything else. Fully pin-for-pin -pin compatible with the Room 32. But it's quite small. So the plan was to use this chip. Now, obviously, getting this chip is quite hard. And they're not cheap. They're actually more expensive to buy this chip than it is to buy a complete Room 32 module. But I thought, okay, sure. How small, using this chip, how small can we make a board? So I took it upon myself to say, well, if it needs to be small, I don't want to match the D1 Mini. I want to beat the D1 Mini. I want to be smaller than the D1 Mini. So I started in Eagle with the dimensions for the D1 Mini. And then I laid out everything as close to this bottom corner here as I could to see how much smaller I could get it. So I built the board over many stages in Eagle. I started off with revision one, two, three, four, and actually submitted revision five today to JLC PCB. The board evolved a bit, but we had a locked off revision one first. So let's have a look at that in Eagle now. Here's the schematic for my version one of my revision one board. So as you can see, we've got the Pico D4 over here. It says auto reset, but the auto reset's just over here at the moment. I've got a whole bunch of GPIO that's been broken out. So you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 IOs. They're all input and output. There's a combination of ADCs and DACs and cap touch. Plus I've got 3.3 uh, volts and ground and reset on one side and V bus, that's so 5 volts, V bat, which we'll talk about in a moment, ground and 3.3 on the other side. So there's plenty of power on both sides of the board. I'm using a CP2104 for the serial UART, and I'm using an AP2112K for voltage regulation. So that's the schematics, fairly straightforward. Obviously, USB in. So let's have a look at the board. And uh, here it is. <laughs> Maybe a little bit hard. To see, I'll just get rid of the bottom for the moment. It presets top, so it's a bit clearer. So that's the layout of the board, and as you can see, here's the Pico D4 over here. I've got it on a 45 degree angle because it's just easier to access a lot of the parts that I needed. I've got my CP2104 sitting here, my voltage regulator. I've got a couple of diodes to protect power coming through. So. The VBAT is designed to allow you to connect a, a battery externally to this board, but the diodes will prevent you from accidentally putting charge into them. So this is the first version of the board. To give you a better idea what this board looks like, I did a preview image of the PCB, which is right here. So this is the top and the bottom of the board with silt screen. Obviously that's pretty large. I have no idea what it would be to scale. It would be something like that, maybe. <laughs> That would be to scale, roughly, I think. Pretty close. It's a pretty small board. So let's go bigger again. So it's a fairly nice looking board. I was very happy with it. And from here, my plan was to start making shields as well. And my first shield I was gonna make was gonna be a LiPo charge shield for it. So I started developing the, the LiPo shield and realized that once all the components were on, two thirds of the shield was empty. And Matt made a, another comment to me about how there was so few parts you could almost squeeze into this board <laughs> and of course that started my brain going again oh really do I want to relay out this board again you know it took me quite a while to get it nice and neat like it is do I really want to do that oh okay let's have a think about it and what I ended up with in my final version 5 was this here is the final schematic for version 5 I called it revision 5 before it's version 5 of revision one of the board. And as you can see, I've moved everything around in the schematic to clean it all up. I now have a LiPo charge section, which is this section over here. I did have a MCP7383, which I have in stock and I was gonna use that and I have used them before for charge circuitry. But I also ordered another chip that's coming from LCSC, which is a top power chip. I'm not quite sure of the model number off the top of my head and I'm gonna probably use that instead for the time being. 
You might also notice that there's a LiPo connector here. It's an interesting thing I will show you on the board. So let's have a look now at how the board looks. And there it is. So a little bit more detailed than what it was before. Before I turn off the back layer, just to make it a bit cleaner, you can notice that I've put dimensions on the board. So it's just over 20 millimeters by 30 millimeters. The D1 Mini is about uh, 25 by 35 or 36. So it's quite a little bit smaller, which is fantastic. I'm going to just hide the top layer just for the moment. So you can see that the only thing that's on the back of the board is a LiPo connector. So the idea is that the board will ship with the charge circuitry and you can still use the battery pin if you want to, but if you want to actually use a LiPo and you want to have it connected to the board, you can attach an included JST connector. You can just hand solder it on if you want to. So that's on the back of the board, underneath where the USB sits on the other side. So let's go back to the top of the board. As you can see, it's quite tight. There's a lot of stuff in here. It does look like there's a little bit of space, but if you look at the context of the size of the board, <laughs> it's not a lot of space at all. And I need space here for ground connections. So if I do a fill, you can see there that they've got quite a few vias on ground. There's one over here, there's one over here. To connect all the ground, there's one over here. There's a couple over here. It got very tight. It was a, definitely a, a challenge to route. So this was absolutely the biggest challenge I'd ever routed because of the space constraints. And to be honest, I wanted to get the board even smaller, but to get it still breadboard friendly and smaller, I would have to bring this row of headers up top here, another 2.54 millimeters down. So it's around here. So it's quite a lot smaller, I'd have to make the board. Already I'm using a mix of 0603 and 0402 components. There's no 0805 on here at all. So that's going to be the first time I've put together a, a board that has 0402 parts on it. But I've got my charge circuitry over here. I've got my LiPo over here. I had to rotate the CP2104 to get access to the pins easily. And I had to straighten up the Pico D4. Would have been nice if I could have them both on an angle because it looked pretty cool. But um, there was just I just couldn't route nicely to it. And of course, both sides of the board have clearance for the aerial. And on both of them, I'm using a ceramic antenna which sits just over here. So let's have a look at what the PCB looks like. It's another preview image. So it's preview six, but still revision one. As you can see over here, revision 2018-1. This is the final board and it is pretty packed in. It's gonna be a fun challenge to build for sure, but I'm quite excited to get it done. So this has been sent off this version to JLC PCB and I'll have that and all the parts I need delivered to me, hopefully the end of this week. And I'll either have a chance to try to build one on the weekend, or I might leave it for my stream, I don't know. I don't believe I'll be able to build this on my live stream without my magnifying glass, and using my magnifying glass will prevent everyone from seeing what I'm doing on the stream. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do there. But that's it. This is my tiny Pico, ESP32 Pico D4 board. And it is just over 20 by 30 millimeters in size with 13 GPIO broken out, built-in LiPo battery charging support with a ceramic antenna and everything you need to do full Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And yeah, I can't wait to get all the stuff and build them and have the finished product in my hand. If there was ever a need for a pick and place for me in my office, this might be it and a microscope. Anyway, this is the start of the story. Thank you for watching. Welcome to all my new subs. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. Until next time, I will catch you all later.